it's Krista Living Sober. This is my first episode and introduction. I've never done this before, so this is very, very new to me. But I wanted to start something where I could share my feelings and my thoughts and some advice and whatever it may be in hopes that it might be able to reach other people who might be experiencing similar things so that maybe my words can help them, you. Yeah, see, I'm just very new at this. Um, so I'm Krista. I'm 30 years old. I'm from Rhode Island, originally from Massachusetts. And the main point of my podcast is sobriety. So I wanted to talk a little bit about sobriety each and every day. And hopefully that some of you can connect with me being sober, whatever it may be. Let's go. Let's dive in. I am two years sober. I know. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's been such an amazing past two years and I never saw myself here. Five years ago, if you were like, hey, where do you see yourself five years from now? I would never, ever see myself sober, holding down a job, engaged, you know, paying rent to live somewhere. No, my life was a complete shit mess. And um, I was lost. I was sad. And I was getting out of control. If you asked anybody I knew, was I a good drinker? They'd probably say no. Um, because just alcohol mixed with me and my emotions always ended badly. Um, so eventually it started getting worse. I would end up in hospitals, blackout. I would end up places where I didn't even know I was because I blacked out and I'd be like, oh shit, not again, you know, and none of that was okay. I look back now and I think how stupid and careless that I was with myself, you know, and um, that today I can say that I have more clarity, I have more, you know, minds and wits about it than I did before because I'm sober, I'm clear. I have a will and a way and I care. I didn't care before. And we're talking only two years ago. I had no care in the world. I woke up every day. I hated myself. I wanted to drink. And that's what I did. I remember, you know, sitting in my backyard smoking cigarettes, just being like, is this it? Is this really what life is all about? Because if I have to go one more day with feeling these thoughts and emotions, then I'm going to off myself. But I never had the courage because I think it takes great courage to commit suicide but I never had that courage to off myself you know I just was miserable and made everybody else around me miserable and I I was lost and that's a lot of mean things to say about myself but at the same time it's true you know I wasn't a happy person And I know now that none of it was my fault because I hadn't really dealt with anything internally yet. I kind of let these problems get out of hand for so long that drinking was my only remedy. And I mean, not even the only remedy because I would do drugs and I would find other outlets to fulfill whatever I needed to fulfill 
you know, in that moment to make me feel better. And that's what it was. Whatever made me feel better, I would dive headfirst to. Whether that was drinking, sex, drugs, whatever you name it, um, that's what I did. Do I have regrets about things? Yes, but also no because... I have experienced so much that I have lessons and I can look back on these lessons and say, wow, like, I know today that the person I was when I did any of this stuff, like, that wasn't me. That wasn't the me who I am today, if that makes sense. That was someone terrified and lost and sad and out of control who had no direction today the girl I am is I'm found I I see the light I have the light I am not blind you know I can see clear what's in front of me I love myself I love others I smile you know I can hold a job down and not miss out because I'm drunk or come to work drinking or whatever have you I am available and accountable and um, people can rely on me I think these words are great because they're coming out of my mouth now and I never thought these words characteristics would be of me So, back to my two years of sobriety, I, the last thing of my drinking that I remember was me going out to a bar after work, getting shit-faced, and, you know, next thing I know, I'm viewing myself in an out-of-body experience, you know, I'm out of my body, and I see myself laying in a hospital bed, and this voice that surrounds me, wherever it is, maybe it's inside of me, I don't know, but it says, it's not your time, and it was just so profound and so loud, but it had so much meaning that I knew instantly that I needed to get back into myself and wake up, and I knew when I woke up, from this experience that I needed to change like even talking about that right now it it disturbs this like emotion inside of me and honestly I haven't I instantly after that moment I became sober you know I instantly made the decision to go to a detox and in that detox I battled with I think the fact that I was giving up alcohol it was almost like a breakup where you're like you're all depressed and sad and you physically can make yourself sick and you know, your heart breaks, and I think I was going through a little bit of a breakup experience where I had to leave my old life behind me for good, forever, and learn how to navigate into this new life. It was so scary. You know, it was so scary, but at the same time, it was so good because I finally had the chance and you know I think it was my last chance I finally had that chance to leave this darkness and go into a light but I didn't know how to I was so confused and afraid and honestly I didn't believe in myself I didn't think I had the strength to go through any of it but here I am two years later and that's amazing So after the detox, I had the option of going back home, and I just knew that that wasn't enough. Like, I think I was there maybe three weeks to a month, 
or something. Maybe 15 days. I'm not sure. I'd have to check my diary, which I kept every single day. But it wasn't enough time. I knew inside my heart, in my mind, that I needed to do a long span of time working on myself and getting sober. I knew I needed to go away. And I knew I wasn't right enough. I wasn't safe enough to go back to the place that I was comfortable because I knew I would still drink. I knew I would still, you know, maybe I would drink too much and I would have died. Instead of this time, I got the chance. Something saved me. Something pushed me to get sober. You know, whether I almost died, whether I did die, whether whatever happened, you know, that I feel was my last push, you know, my last straw. I think if I went out and used any time after that, it wouldn't have been good. And I know mentally I just didn't care anymore. So uh, I probably would have ended my life because I had no will. I didn't care. So after detox, I there was a few different programs that I was interested in, some farther than others, but there was the Salvation Army in Rhode Island. I got them from Massachusetts, so Rhode Island. I mean, it was farther enough away where I could come back if I needed to, you know. It wasn't so far away that I'd be that homesick. Or, but anyway, I was terrified, but I made the decision to go there, you know. It's a hard program, and they tell you that, but you don't know that until you're actually there. It's a six-month six month program, and you have to work when you're there. You know, you don't just, it's not just like a sunrise bay where you're, like, getting a massage and meditating and doing yoga, you know. It's a work program, a very intense work, faith-based program, and... You know, I couldn't wear leggings, okay? There was a very strict dress code there. Um, when you first arrive, you know, they go through your, what little things you have and tell you what you can and can't have, tell you what you can and can't wear. It's a very, um, it's kind of, it's called the Salvation Army, right? So... Compare it to going to a boot camp where you're preparing yourself to become a soldier, a warrior. Um, This was a boot camp where you get your faith back, you gain sobriety, and you lose who you were before. And now this only works when you're willing, when you're allowing it to work. Because being in that program for the six months, I stayed and I completed the program, but... I saw hundreds of people in and out. It was like a revolving door. And not to say the program doesn't work because it 100% does. But you just have to be a willing participant. And I was. It didn't happen overnight. This is just kind of like an introduction of what brought me to my two years. But we'll get into more of that. If you want, I can do, like, my diary reads and my journal blogs and whatever, because I wrote every day. But I did that program. I eventually did a sober living after that and then finally moved in with my boyfriend at the time, who is now my fiancé. But there is so much to my story of sobriety But I just want to throw it out there that, hey, I'm Krista Living Sober, and this is going to be my podcast. And I hope that everybody takes the time to listen because I know that I can, you know, be maybe a positive outlet for others 
I could be a helpful change in others' lives. I don't know. Maybe this is just way more helpful for myself, you know, too. And I need that as well. So thank you for listening. This is Crystal Living Sober. Tune in to my next episode.